Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, Senior Marketing Specialist at Transcript. It's my great pleasure to invite Dr. Liu Song Yin today, Associate Director and Head of Antibody Department at Transcript, to give a talk about integrated antibody drug discovery, lead generation, characterization, and optimization. Dr. Yin received his PhD from University of Massachusetts Medical School specialized in antigen presentation and CD4 positive T cell epitope selection. He then joined Pfizer, specialized in immunogenicity of therapeutic biologics. Dr. Yin has extensive experience in antibody drug discovery, especially in DNA immunization, high throughput back screening, ELISA kit development, and anti-idiotype antibody development for antibody drug PD and PK studies. In this webinar, first, he will give an overview of the antibody drug discovery. Then, he will talk about Hyperdoma lead generation platform available in Genscript. After that, he will review a suite of antibody characterization tools, followed by lead optimization efforts. Hope you can take this opportunity to learn more of our expertise and ask questions that you may have regarding antibody drug discovery. To ensure the sound quality, all attendees are muted in listening-only mode. Please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box located at the lower right corner of your screen throughout the talk. Dr. Yin will address your questions all together after the presentation. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Yin to give his talk on the integrated antibody drug discovery lead generation, characterization, and optimization. Dr. Yin. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for the introduction, and thanks, everyone, for attending this webinar. As mentioned, I will talk about integrated antibody drug discovery, lead generation, characterization, and uh, optimization. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will first give an overview on antibody drug discovery, and then talk about lead generation, lead characterization, and lead optimization. I will share several case studies during the presentation, and I am happy to answer your question at the end of my talk. As you all know that antibody drug market is booming with annual revenue over 100 billion US dollars. In a recent review, among the 20 top selling biopharmaceutical products in 2013, half of them are antibody drugs, including the top three. Notably, just Humira alone, an anti-TNF antibody, achieved $11 billion in 2013. With the huge breakthrough of therapeutic antibodies in immunotherapy in recent years, including approval of Yevoy, Kajuda, Tycentric, and Bavosha for cancer therapy, the antibody drug market continues to soar. So antibody drug discovery and development process is really complicated. And here I listed several essential steps. The process starts with target assessment and validation based on literature reports or in-house tests. After a target-specific project plan is established, regions and assays for screening of specific high affinity and functional antibody will be prepared. Antibody heat generation will be followed with either library approach or hypodoma approach. After you obtain some hundreds of thousands of heats from screening, you can further narrow down the list by performing favorable biochemical, biophysical, and functional assays for selecting of leads. Leads optimization is yearly followed, including chimeric antibody generation, antibody humanization, and antibody affinity maturation. After that, large-scale antibody production will be performed for further toxicity and efficacy studies. Based on those data, a few candidate antibody molecules will be selected and further characterized with stability and durability assays. Final selected candidate will enter clinical trials and need to pass extensive regulatory agency evaluations before entering into the market for therapeutic indications. This is the overview of GeneScript platform for antibody drug discovery and development from target to IND. Hypodoma generation and lead identification is the start. After getting the antibody leads from Hypodoma approach, Antibody engineering is performed for lead optimization, including antibody humanization and affinity maturation. 
Usually, these brown hypodermal approach have reasonable high affinity with KD in nanomolar to sub-nanomolar range, and therefore, anybody affinity maturation may not be necessary, especially with affinity guaranteed humanization process. Here, in anybody drug discovery process, multiple in vitro and in vivo functional assays are needed to categorize and screen for functional antibody from numerous binders. After an optimized lead is obtained, transient or stable expression of lead antibody is performed for producing large amount of materials for further efficacy, toxicity, stability, and durability studies, which are required for IND filing. I will first talk about lead generation. There are several technologies to generate therapeutic antibody leads. Hapdoma approach with human transgenic mice or B cells from immunized human body can directly generate human antibodies. We have collaborated with Harbor to use their H3L2 mice for fully human antibody generation. The major limitation of using transgenic animals for fully human antibody are that the technologies are very limited and the cost is extremely high. The most popular one is the Hapdoma approach with a rodent system in which you get rodent antibodies and then perform humanization to get humanized antibodies. Feed or yeast display is also an option to get humanized or human antibodies, depending on the library built, and we also have this capability. Besides the hypodoma and the library approach, there are other technologies for generating therapeutic antibodies, including the SLAN technology, which recovers the variable region sequence from specific single B cell from immunized animals and is able to generate humanized antibodies. More recently, next generation of antibody sequencing from naive or immunized individuals can also be applied to generate human or humanized antibodies. As mentioned, hypodermal technology has been around since 1970s but still powerful. By 2016, FDA has approved over 62 therapeutic antibody drugs and most of them are derived from hypodermal technology and only eight from free display platform. The hypodermal technology still generates high market value by inputting more therapeutic antibodies into the market. Here are several approved antibody drugs from each technology platform. As you can see that most of them are derived from hypodermal approach as fully human antibodies from transgenic mice, colored red, or humanized antibodies from rodent system, colored blue here. Conventional hypodoma generation procedures follow immunogen preparation, animal immunization, fusion, and hypodoma screening. Subcloning and hypodoma acquire polarization and antibody production. GeneScript has extensive experience in all of these critical steps, from multiple approaches on immunogen preparation to a variety of choice on host animals and optimized adjuvant and immunization schedules. We also have high efficient electrofusion platform and high throughput screening platforms for identifying binders against the most native epitopes. Multiple characterization tools are built in to narrow down the hit list for lead selection. Moreover, we have a very experienced team for project management and in the last 13 years, we have successfully delivered more than 10,000 antibody projects, including over 200 therapeutic antibody projects. In the next couple of slides, I will expand a little bit on each of our expertise in the critical path. We have multiple choice of immunogens on target, on target basis, from peptide, which can be native or modified, to protein, including secreted proteins, extracellular domain of membrane proteins and membrane preps. Whole cell and DNA immunization are suitable for receptors including GBCRs, surface antigens, and also ion channels and transporters. Virus like particle is efficient in incorporating membrane targets for immunization. Each of the immunology design has its own advantage and limitations. We can also use a combination of the various immunology options following specific project requirements. In the case that our human target has high homology with the rodent counterparts, we have the proprietary ImmunoPlus technology to break immune tolerance. In the case shown below, before applying this technology, 
all the four mice did not generate sufficient antibody response against the high homology target. However, after applying the immunoplast technology, all mice generated significant antiserum titers. Another application of this immunoplast technology is to develop surrogate antibody such as mouse and mouse or rat, rat and rat antibody for target validation. So after the project is validated on a target basis and the immunogens have been prepared accordingly, we could start immunization and hepatoma fusion. As mentioned, multiple choice of animal strains are available and in most cases they can reach a very high titer after thorough immunization with an average titer of 512K. Based on our experience, SGL mice offers high antibody diversity. Our licensed GAM mice are good for generating high affinity antibodies. Besides mice and rats, we have also established our proprietary monorab rapid monoclonal antibody platform. Even though to date, no rapid antibodies are approved by FDA or EMA, probably due to immunogenicity concerns. But several are in clinical trials. H2L2 mice from Hubble are able to generate fully human antibodies. Compared with a library approach, Hepatoma approach offers a great advantage of high developability of antibody leads, but has the intrinsic disadvantage of missing potential antibody sequence due to low fusion efficiency. The electrofusion method we used guarantees high cell fusion efficiency to increase the size of Hepatoma for screening. We observed an average fusion efficiency of one Hepatoma over 200 to 2,000 B cells, resulting 20,000 to 50,000 hepatomas per animal. The plot on the right is a summary of the hepatoma obtained from our recent 575 projects. Compared with traditional uh, chemical PEG fusion, which usually results in 1,000 to 2,000 hepatomas, the high electrofusion generated an average of 50,000 hepatomas for screening. After we obtain a large number of hepatomas, the next step is to perform hepatoma screening for binders. We have multiple natural epitope based high throughput screening platforms for soluble target. Both capture and indirect ELISA are in place. For membrane target, we have BD effects caliber with high throughput loader and high throughput IQ screening system which can read a 96 well played in 3 to 5 minutes by fax. We are also equipped with the homogeneous HTMARCH binding acid system for membrane target binder screening. Next generation BioCore ADK is also in place for high throughput screening and characterization. With this high throughput screening platforms, we are able to identify numerous heats of binders. After we get a large number of heats, multiple characterization methods need to be performed to identify functional antibody leads with high specificity and affinity. In the next few slides, I will talk about the therapeutic antibody characterization, which is necessary to identify fit for purpose therapeutic leads from numerous binding heats. Before I go into the characterization assays, I want to bring your attention to the features of antibody drug discovery projects. On the left side is a general workflow for a regular monoclonal antibody project aiming to identify ELISA application to an antibody with a straightforward streamlined workflow from immunization to ELISA test or test bleeds and then select animals for fusion with the screening by ELISA. Based on ELISA screening, subcloning is preferred to obtain stable monoclones and the last step will be ELISA QC or purified antibodies. Unlike reagent MAB projects, on the right side is the general workflow for representative antibody drug discovery project for membrane target. As discussed, the goal of ADD projects is to identify specific high affinity functional antibody. Besides ELISA tests of test bleed, test type bleed titers, FAX is also performed to check the membrane bound antibodies and often the test bleed will be further screened with clients in-house functional assay. After selecting animals for fusion, besides ELISA screening, FACS screening is also needed. 
Subnating or parental clones are often provided to clients for in-house functional assay with reference information of those subnating included, such as total ITG concentration, relative affinity by ELISA EC50, like the blocking activity. With all this data together, certain clones will be selected for following subcloning. Subcloning will again be screened with those assays, as well as the final purified antibodies. As you can see from these two workflows, antibody drug discovery projects are way more complicated in terms of screening and calculation assays to identify therapeutic leads. As mentioned, therapeutic antibody discovery aims to identify highly specific functional clones as the leads for downstream antibody drug development. And therefore, multiple antibody calculations are needed. A pack of characterization tools are available at GeneScript, including binding activity and relative affinity ranking by EC50 for selecting high affinity clones, like in the blocking activity by IC50. Target specificity and cross-species reactivity can also be evaluated for lead selection. ELISA or SPR-based epitope binning can evaluate whether the antibody heats bind to the same epitope or not. And definitive any affinity measurement can be performed by Bioca. Functional IC50 or EC50 can be determined in cell-based functional assays. In the next few slides, I will give you some examples and case study data for those calculations. In this slide, we aim to measure the binding activity of purified antibodies to antigens by ELISA EC50 assay to select antibodies with desired binding activity affinity for downstream functional assay. As you can see from the bottom left plot, the, this 10 MAB should distinguish binding activity and the corresponding EC50 was calculated. Based on our experience, antibodies with EC50 in the range of nanogram per ml should decent binding. For membrane targets, we can also use flow cytometry to evaluate the binding activity of purified antibodies to membrane-bound targets, as demonstrated in the bottom right plot. For most of the targets with known ligands or receptors, the functional clones usually have the feature of ligand blocking activity. Therefore, ligand blocking activity calculation is often performed for haploma subnating during screening and for purified antibodies of final clones. In this example, 10 MABs were tested for their lightning blocking activity, and as you can see from the data that they show different blocking activities. MAB8 and MAB9 could not block the binding of lightning to target protein at all. From this data, antibodies with strong lightning blocking activity, such as MAB10 and MAB3 in this example, can be selected for further calculations. For membrane targets, Lighting blocking activity can also be evaluated by facts. In this example, antibodies against PDL1 were generated and the lighting blocking activity were, was assessed by facts. As shown in the bottom left figure, a parallel experiment needs to be done to find out the appropriate lighting concentration, which is 0.2 microgram per ml of PD1. Then, the lightning blocking experiment was performed using that concentration of PDL1. As you can see from the bottom right, MAB1 showed a strong lightning blocking activity, which is an attack list antibody, while MAB did not show any blocking effect. Interestingly, MAB3 showed a lightning stimulating effect, which is agonist antibody. After the lightning blocking activity assessment, desired antibodies can be selected for further lead calculations. Another calculation for lead selection is to measure the cross-species reactivity. In most cases, cross-reactive antibodies are desired for future animal studies. In this example, MAB1 and MAB2 generated against human targets were tested for their cross-reactivity against human, mouse, rat, and monkey targets. As you can see from the bottom left figure, MAB1 should binding reactivity to human target as expected, but no binding to mouse and rat targets. MAB1 also should cross reactivity to monkey targets, 
due to high homology between monkey and a human target. MAB2 should good bind to human and a monkey targets just like MAB1, but also decent although lower binding to red target and no binding to mouse target as, at all. With this cross-reactivity data, if you want to use monkey for animal studies, you can use either MAB1 or MAB2. But if you want to use rat for animal studies, only MAB2 is suitable. Neither MAB1 nor MAB2 works in mouse models. In that case, you need to develop a surrogate mouse anti-mouse antibody for target validation in mouse models using our Immune Plus technology. Or you have to generate a transgenic mouse with a human gene to transgenic into the mouse animals. After feeding is another useful characterization tool for lead selection, in which antibodies are grouped by their binding epitopes on the antigen. Antibodies bind to different epitopes may have distinguished binding modes, mechanism of efficacy and safety concerns, as well as antibody drug availability. In this case study, competitive ELISA was explored to group the epitopes of four antibodies in a checkboard format. As you can see from the data, Unlabeled MAB1 could compete the binding with spiking labeled MAB1, which is expected as self-validation. MAB2 and MAB3 can also efficiently compete the binding with MAB1, which shows that they probably bind to the same app2. In contrast, MAB4 could not compete the binding against MAB1, but would compete with itself. Taken together, this data demonstrates that MAB1, MAB2, and MAB3 bind to the same epitope, while MAB4 binds to a different epitope. Besides ELISA, epitope binding can also be performed by biochemical based method as shown on the right. If two antibodies bind to different epitopes on the antigen, an additional signal will be observed. You can then select antibodies in different epitopes for further lead evaluation, or you can select antibodies share the same epitope with non-antibody candidates. Using the Hypodoma platforms and our over 13 years ex expertise, we have successfully raised antibody to various targets, including soluble proteins like cytokines, single transmembrane proteins like the immune checkpoint proteins, multiple transmembrane targets like GBCRs and ion channels. We delivered over 200 pharmaceutical antibody campaigns with over 60 of them are in downstream humanization and cell line development. Notably, Two of them are ready to file IND soon. In the recent several years, therapeutic antibodies targeting immune checkpoint proteins have achieved great success in multiple oncology indications, including Yavoid against CDL4, Kajuda and Obdivo against PDL PD1, and the Tysentric and Bavancia against PDL1. We catch the wave and accumulated extensive experience in identifying therapeutic antibody leads against those targets. In the next few slides, I will show you a case study of anti-immune checkpoint antibody lead identification through Hapdoma approach. This is the overview of this comprehensive case study. In this practice, 10 mice were immunized and the test bleed titers were evaluated by both ELISA and FAX. After that, two animals with top titers were performed for fusion and the generated hapdomas were played plated into 65 landing square plates. After primary and cumulative screening, 843 ELISA positive wells or parent clones were identified and 86 of them were confirmed by with lichen blocking activity by ELISA, of which 26 parent clones were confirmed with binding by effects and they proceeded to one round subcloning. 53 one-round subclones were obtained and we selected 28 of them for antibody microproduction. Those 28 antibodies were validated by mixed inside reaction function assay, which is a standard function assay for immune checkpoint antibody lead identification. After the single dose MLR function assay, 12 of the one-round subclones were further subclone to obtain stabilized final clones, and then larger scale antibody production was performed. For those 12 antibodies, multiple characterizations, including ELISA EC50 and the facts for binding activity, ELISA IC50 and the facts for lichen blocking activity. After those characterizations, 
5 antibodies were selected for multiple dose mixed new cell reaction function assay at active binning cross species reactivity, affinity measurement, and sequencing. In this way, we showed how functional leads were identified through fun hypodoma approach. In the next few slides, detailed data will be presented. This slide shows the EC, ELISA EC50 to evaluate the binding activity of 12 antibodies using the market drug as a reference. As you can see that many good binders have been obtained with comparable or even better binding activity compared with the reference market drug. In this slide, the 12 antibodies were evaluated for their lightning blocking activity. And again, we have obtained several antibody leads comparable to market drug. There are some antibodies showed very good, very low lightning blocking activity, such as 12 H11 D7 and 23 F12 E2 A9, which probably should not be selected at least for further downstream development. This slide evaluated the surface binding of 12 antibodies to cell lines of expressing the target. As you can see from the data, all 12 antibodies showed decent binding to membrane-bound target. In this slide, like in the blocking activities of the 12 antibodies was evaluated by effects against the membrane-bound target. Most antibodies showed efficient like in the blocking activity, but not 21H11D7 and 23F12 E2A9, which is consistent with the ELISA IC50 results. After those binding and like in the blocking activity tests, Five antibodies were selected, selected for multi-dose functional assay, which is a mixed single cell reaction assay. Again, the market drug was used as a reference control, and we have uh, obtained therapeutic leads with comparable in vitro functional activity with reference market drug. In the last slide of this case study, aptobinin was performed for the five antibodies to see whether they share the same aptob or not. As you can see from the checkboard assay format, Four antibodies could compete with the monkey's drug for binding of antigen, which showed that probably they share the same epitope. In contrast, the antibody 23 f 12 e 2 a 9 did not compete with other four antibodies as well as the monkey's drug, which showed that very likely this antibody binds to a different epitope on the antigen. If you remember from the previous ELISA IC50 and effects blocking data, this antibody also did not have lightning blocking activity, and this is consistent with the idea that it binds to a different epitope. Another message is that the clone 1H10C4D4 and 16H5D5B4 may have stronger affinity than marked drug to the same epitope on the target, as demonstrated by better competing ability with marked drug which is also consistent with previous ELISA EC50 data. So far, we have shared a case study of how therapeutic antibody leads were identified by the hypodoma approach. So after a functional, highly specific lead is generated, the next step is for lead optimization. Due to high immunogenicity of marine and chimeric antibodies, humanization is required for rodent leads. Antibody humanization is the process of replacing non-human antibody frameworks with human ones. Successful antibody humanization depends on maintaining the affinity after replacing residues. In general, there are two kinds of humanization strategies. CDR grafting, which does not change human germline, and germline shuffling, which change human germline. In our express humanization package, we use classic CDR grafting strategy. In this strategy, antibody sequence is analyzed to select best human germline acceptors for marine CDRs. We usually select the five heavy chain and the five light chain acceptors. After that, we commonly humanized antibodies are expressed and purified for affinity ranking and then pick the best antibodies for affinity characterization. This is a case study for humanizing antibody recognized peptide. After humanization, we identified antibodies with comparable affinity as well as specificity against peptides and normal peptides. Another humanization strategy 
that we use guarantees the affinity won't be lost during humanization process. In this strategy, after the sequence analysis and CDR grafting, we perform homology structure modeling to identify backmutation residues and use high throughput screening to identify affinity guarantee antibodies. We license the patented FASIBA platform for high throughput screening of humanized leads. FASIBA, short for fast screening of expression, biophysical properties and affinity, is a technology used to select the best protein binders from a large number of protein candidates in a high throughput fashion without actually purifying these proteins. The FASIBA plasmid has a SAS attack which recognizes BSA in peak molar affinity and it is reversible after acid treatment. FASIBA selection is based on the experimental exp expression level coating BSA on the plate, binding affinity coating anything on the plate, biophysical properties and other functional tests using secreted antibodies in the supernatant. This is a case study for antibody humanization using FASIBA screening. As you can see that after our humanization process, the antibody affinity was attained, retained and even increased. We also included the thermal stability screening with our patented FASIBA platform during the humanization process. For therapeutic lead selection and optimization, antibody drug durability assessment is very critical especially for post-translational modifications such as asparagine and glutamine deamidation, asparagine asmoration, methylene and tryptophan oxidation, free system, N and O glycosylation, and pyroglucamate, lysine glycation, and uh, isoelectric point cost aggregation. During the lead optimization process, these risks will be assessed and actions will be taken if they are experimentally validated to be real risks. To summarize our humanization platform, it includes extensive bioinformatics analysis, fit display and the high throughput of placebo screening to deliver the best antibody leads. Vaccination will only be performed on residues with the least potential immunogenistic risk and the durability assessment will be performed to reduce stability and post-translational uh, modification risk. We have extensive experience in delivering over 60 projects with 95% success rate. Affinity maturation is another lead optimization process which is aimed to increase the affinity of selected antibody leads. Usually leads from hypodermal approach have reasonably high affinity with KD in nanomolar to some nanomolar range, and therefore antibody affinity maturation will not be necessary, especially with our affinity guaranteed optimization process. However, in some cases that the obtained leads have relatively low affinity, such as from feed library campaign and transgenic animals, or the final application needs extremely high affinity, affinity maturation is required. Our affinity maturation platform utilizes our patented high throughput placebo screening approach, which guarantees to improve the affinity by at least tenfold. Here we show the flowchart of the affinity maturation process. After the affinity antibody sequence is obtained and confirmed with binding to energy, we will perform the parallel mapping to identify the key residues for antibody energy in action. An NK single point mutation library is built and is screened to select top binders. Then, combinatory library is built and is screened to select best binders. The affinity matured IgG is produced and characterized, and again, we guarantee to improve the affinity by at least tenfold. Here is a case study for affinity maturation. As you can see, the process improved the affinity from 94 nanomolar a wild type to 2.5 nanometer of affinity matured antibody by 38 fold. To summarize, our affinity maturation platform designed mutations based on relevance and the usefulness of CDR amino acid residues after parental mapping and a guarantee to increase affinity by tenfold for high affinity antibodies or increase to nanometer binding affinity for low affinity antibodies. 
And then if you type antibodies, I must have tools for antibody drug discovery. Since 2009, GeneScript has been specialized in making an idiotype antibodies to support our customers' PKPD and immunogenicity evaluations of antibody drugs. Our record of success rate is 100% with more than 200 projects. The left panel shows anti-idotype antibodies with high affinity with KDs in subnanomolar range, and the red panel shows anti-idotype antibodies with high specificity that only recognize antibody drug but not extract control and total IgG in human serum. Usually, monoclonal anti-idotype antibodies are used for PK studies and polyclonal antibody and either type antibodies are used as positive control for immunogenicity studies. In the last few slides, I will give a quick overview about GeneScript and our facilities. GeneScript is a world-leading bio biology cell founded in 2002 in New Jersey and currently is the number one in the world for gene synthesis. GeneScript is publicly traded in Hong Kong stock market in 2015 and specialized in antibody drug discovery and development. In this slide, I will give you an overview of our facility. GeneScript has over 13 years experience in antibody production. Our animal facility is ALAC and OLO accredited, hosting more than 8,000 rabbits and 12,000 rodents and protein providing a broad range of animal service from individual cases to bulk orders. We are equipped with high production capacity and have successfully delivered over 100,000 polyclonal projects and uh, over 10,000 monoclonal projects, over 200 therapeutic lead generation and 60 lead optimization projects. If you have any anybody production need, GeneScript is a one-stop shopping place for you. This is an overview of the antibody service that we offer at GeneScript. Besides the antibody drug discovery related service, which includes a therapeutic antibody drug discovery platform, and the idiotype antibody generation, surrogate antibody, and immunogenicity assays, we also offer a raging antibody service for PAB, MAB, phosphorus specific antibodies, neutralization and blocking antibodies, as well as antibody pairing. We also offer more than 1,000 catalog antibodies, diagnostic antibodies, and immunoassay development, such as ELISA kits for endogenous protein detection, host cell protein detection, PK and immunogenicity evaluation. In the last slide, here is a quick summary for our core competence. We have more than 10 years experience in antibody drug discovery and development with a track record of high success rate. We have a streamlined one-stop solution from lead generation to lead optimization, from discovery to development. High standard documentation and IP production profile are also in place. For this complicated antibody drug discovery project, we value the collaboration as partnership, not just providing cell service. For therapeutic leads, we deliver a characterized humanized sequence ready for integrated downstream development process. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope you have learned something useful for your antibody drug discovery projects. With that, I will pass the ball to Andrew for the Q&A session, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yin, for such an informative talk. And thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to this webinar. So now it comes to the Q&A session. Uh, let's First, look at the first question. Um, what is the general timeline for antibody drug discovery? Uh, that's a good, really a good question, and uh, and that really depends on the target, because antibody drug discovery is highly customized on a target basis. But in general, the antibody lead identification takes about six to twelve months, and the lead optimization takes about another six months. So in take in total. The lead generation and lead optimization takes about one year. Okay, so one year is the general timeline for antibody drug discovery. Okay, so uh, the next question. Uh, for DNA immunization, as you talked earlier, uh, what is the success rate? So for single transmembrane targets, such as immune checkpoint proteins, our success rate of DNA immunization is over 95%. For multiple transmembrane targets, such as GBCRs and ion channels, 
due to the extremely complexity of targets, of success rate of DNA immunization is about 50%, but which is still high in the field, and we are currently improving this in success rate. Oh, that's great to know. <laughs> so then the third question, um, how is the antibody drug discovery different from regular reagent antibody discovery process? Yeah, that's really a good question. And uh, there are several differences, and I summarized uh, to be at, at least four differences. So the first one is the screening process of reagent antibody development is much easier. And the second one is the QC standard of reagent antibody development is much lower, as I showed uh, in the slides. The third one is the documentation requirement of reagent antibody development is much lower because for the therapeutic, we have to prepare all necessary documents for anti-filing. And the last one would be the need for high throughput platform or region antibody development is much lower because in, in therapeutic antibody discovery, we need to string a lot of binders to identify a good therapeutic lead. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next question is, um, could you describe the advantages and disadvantages of using transgenic mice? for uh, this development of fully humanized antibody as therapeutic lead. Yeah, sure. So the disadvantage of the transgenic mice is the cost of early stage is much higher, and the access to this platform is very limited, but it has several advantages. And the first one is using this platform, there is no need for time-consuming humanization process. And also, the developability of leads from this platform is much better. So to short, the transgenic match is good, but the cost is high. Okay. Uh, so now I think it comes to the last question on the question list, which is, uh, what are the rationales and limitations in choosing peptide, protein, cell line, or DNA immunogens? Yeah, so that's a relatively complicated question. Uh, to, to be simple, the peptide immunology is cost-effective and can specify targeting epitopes, but may not have correct or native combinations. Protein immunity is usually expensive, especially for mammalian expressed, and may have the concerns of incorrect non-native combinations, but they are very immunogenic and usually they can end up with very high titers. Cell line immunogen has native combination, but it usually has relatively low abundant immunogens, and it also has many non-specific targets, and the cost is relatively high. So DNA immunization can bring native combination of immunogen and can last longer. The drawback is the immune res response is usually low, and the cost is relatively high, and the immunization timeline is relatively long. So to summary. The peptide and the protein is relatively cheap and it can result in high titers. So for, for uh, simple targets such as soluble targets and a single transmembrane target, we can use this kind of strategy. But for multiple targets such as TPCR and the ion channels, uh, we would recommend to use DNA and the cell immunogens. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I guess that's it for the questions that I have. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Yin, for such a wonderful talk. And I hope every uh, attendee can learn something useful to help your antibody drug uh, development projects. So this is the end of the webinar, I guess. So um, have a great one, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.